Welcome back, everybody, to the Gospel According to X. On this program, we just take a look and see what social media has been saying about God, the Bible, and Christianity. In this program, I am not after your agreement. I'm after your understanding. I want you to understand what the poster said. I want you to understand, hopefully, what I'm saying. But more importantly, I want you to understand what God has said in His Word. I want you to understand God and His Word. That's what matters. Because it's not about whether or not the person who made the post is right or whether I'm right. What it's ultimately about is God right because that's what matters. So from this program, I hope it encourages you to open your Bible, study it, and to find out what the Bible actually says about a matter. So what is on our plate today? Well, today we are looking at a post by the provisionist perspective, and it's a meme. And from the looks of it, it seems pretty straightforward to me. I Hopefully I've got this right again, an account I don't know a great deal about. I've seen it a couple of times, but I don't know anything about the people behind it. Uh, the post, the meme, is asked the question, what is man's requirement for new life? And of course, the answer to that is faith, period. So faith, I'm assuming then faith only, faith alone would be the background of this person. And in response to that, they are obviously poking some fun at here, mocking the Reformed theology. Um, now, you may or may not know some background of this, and we certainly don't have time to go over all of it today, because if you start looking at it, you get a lot of different answers. But basically, provisionist going to hold to the idea, well, that God has provided, God has made a provision for everybody to be saved. They would go to like 1 Timothy 2, 6, where Jesus gave himself a ransom for all, or say 2 Peter chapter 3, where Peter says that God is not willing that any should perish and that all men should come to repentance, to talk about the fact that there is an opportunity for everybody to be saved. This particular individual, I'm assuming either made the meme or is using the meme, is obviously taking a faith-only position because faith, period, in bold type, is all you have. Now, the Reformed side, you can get a lot of different backgrounds on what and what that means to be the Reformed side. In its most basic understanding, you have, well, the, 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 the Reformation movement, which led to Reformed theology among people. So you've got people like Luther and Zwingli and some others go back and study the Reformation movement. You'll get to them. So you're dealing here with an older school um, um, Protestant uh, theology would be my guess. There are other definitions of that word, but that's where I'm going to go where, where I think this is. Um, a lot of American denominationalism and certainly the non-denominational segments of American evangelicalism don't really fit very well into the Reformed background. It's just not where they are. At the heart here, though, you're going to have probably, it would be my guess what's being pointed out here, is a, is a Calvinistic, certainly a, a, a doctrine of predestination, that uh, says that some can be saved or some are elected to be saved, some are elected to be lost or so therefore not elected. And so that would be the guess that is the back. My guess is the, the, the other side of the coin from this post. So you have a, a, a free will offering, all people can be saved, but it is by faith and faith only versus the Reformation theology, which assuming it has a Calvinistic background, has the elect and the non-elect and God has made his choice. And then you have a whole long discussion from there. I want to focus on the first part though, because we come across, I say we, if, if you look at social media a lot, you come across a lot of faith only type doctrines relating to salvation. And let me, let me start by asking and answering this question if I can. Is faith necessary to being saved? Absolutely. It is absolutely necessary to being saved. My, my edition of the Bible here that I'm holding has about 1,230 pages for, in, in the Old and the New Testaments. Guess on how many pages of those 1,230 pages do you need faith? 1,230 of them. There is not a page in this book that would say to you that you don't need to have faith in God. If you are, are guilty of sin and you need to be saved by God, and the answer to that is you are, um, you need faith. That's the beginning point of it all. Without faith, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, um, the one that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. goes on to say then, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So that's the point. Without faith, you can't please him. You must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. There is not a page on your Bible that that truth is not exactly that. It is true. The problem is that most of the people who hold that position hold to the idea that it is faith and faith alone. Now, they sometimes add grace alone and about three other things to it, but it is faith and faith alone. If you in any way capacity say that it's anything beyond or in addition to faith, you are nullifying the, 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 the sovereignty of God and you're making it as a source of merit or so on along those lines. Faith only for them is the critical doctrine. The problem is the Bible doesn't teach that because on these 1,230 pages, 
guess guess how many pages of them say you don't have to obey God? See, every page on this book will also tell you that you need to obey God. There's only one passage in the entirety of the Bible which talks about faith being alone, faith alone. It's over in James chapter 2, verse 24 of James ch chapter 2 says, You see, there, see therefore how man is justified by works, speaking of the salvation of Abraham. You see how uh, man is justified by works and not by faith alone. And, and that's what it says. It is not by faith alone. It goes on to say in verse 26 of that same chapter, just as the body or the, the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Again, faith without works is alone, therefore it's dead. See, see, faith only doctrine puts a dichotomy between faith and obedience. You can't do that. Paul in the book of Romans begins the great book of faith by saying, I am here to preach among all nations the obedience of faith. That's chapter 1, verse 5. He ends the book in chapter 16, I believe it's verse 25, by saying the same thing, that the, the mystery of God has been revealed, it's been disclosed, and all the prophetic writings have pointed to it, and that is what God has, has been done so by the command of God, and it is there to bring about the obedience of faith among all nations. Let's go back to Hebrews 11 for just a second. We quoted Hebrews 11:6, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is rewarded them that diligently seek him. Let's read through Hebrews 11 for just a second. Hebrews 11 says, let's start in verse 4, by faith Abel offered a sacrifice. Well, that's faith and obedience. By faith Noah, being warned of God about things unseen, constructed an ark. Well, that's faith in building an ark. Sarah, or, or Abraham, by faith, when he was called, left his home. He left and went and lived in the land of promise. By faith, uh, uh, Sarah re, re, uh, um, received power to conceive Isaac. And lo and behold, Abraham and Sarah did something to conceive Isaac. You may want to check a textbook to figure out how Isaac was actually conceived. Faith alone didn't quite cut it. There was more. The Bible goes on to say, Hebrews 11 goes on to say, these all died in faith. Then back to Abraham in verse number 17, it says, by faith, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac. And Isaac then offered up, by faith, uh, offered up future blessings. Jacob did the same thing. He blessed the sons of Joseph. Um, uh, Joseph at the same at the same time, by faith, told people about the coming exodus that God had promised. Moses' his parents, by faith, hid him in the, in the reeds for three months. Moses, when he got older, by faith, refused to be called the, 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 the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And by faith, he left Egypt. And by faith, he offered up the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, which God commanded. By faith, uh, the, the people crossed over the dry land of the, of the Sea of Galilee, or the Sea of Galilee, excuse me, across the Red Sea. Um, by faith, as you keep going down through the chapter, the falls of Jericho fell down. Didn't, didn't, didn't connect at all to the fact that they were walked around for those seven days. Just by faith, they fell down. Um, by faith, Rahab, the prostitute, lived because she kept her promises to the spies that she was keeping, and so on. That is the nature of salvation by faith in Hebrews 11. By faith, Abel obeyed. By faith, Noah obeyed. By faith, Abraham obeyed and obeyed and obeyed. By faith, Sarah and Abraham, well, they obeyed. By faith, Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and, 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 the, and the nation coming out of Egypt and all of the, the, the nation as it's surrounding J Jericho for those seven days and do it, walking around it. By faith, Rahab and so on down the line. By faith, all of these died in faith because their faith obeyed. That's the book of Hebrews. That's the great chapter on faith. The one that says by faith, without faith rather, it is impossible to please God then tells you the stories of everybody who by faith obeyed exactly what God wanted them to do. It's because there's no dichotomy. There's no separation in those things anywhere in the Bible. You have faith and you obey. That's the way it is from page 1 to page 1230 on every page of your Bible. Stay with me for one more thing in the book of Hebrews. Go back to Hebrews chapter 5, because the Hebrews writer didn't change his mind between chapter 5 and chapter 7. In chapter 5 and verse 8, he says about Jesus that he was the son of God, obviously. He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Lo well, and behold, he learned obedience. And then verse 9, it says, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Now, is it true that he is the author of eternal salvation to all them that have faith in him? Absolutely, that's true. There's not a page on your Bible where that would be untrue. Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to those who have faith in him. That's true. But it is equally true in the pages of your Bible that he is the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. That's never not true. That's why he said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, but he that does the will of my Father. That's obedience. You better obey God. There is not a page on your Bible where you can get away with not obeying God. Obey him every day of your life. Be faithful 
unto death. In other words, have faith and be full of it. Faith being being faith without works is dead. Being alone, keep being faithful until the day you die, and you'll receive the crown of life. If you teach a doctrine that says you are saved by works apart from your faith, you're teaching false doctrine. But equally so, if you teach a doctrine that says faith is devoid of works, that there is some kind of dichotomy, you're saved by faith and faith alone, you're teaching false doctrine. There is not a page from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 on this text where that doctrine of works only or the doctrine of faith only is true. God wants you to be faithful to him. And that faithfulness demands that you find out exactly what God said to do and not do. Do the things he said do. Don't do the things he didn't say do. It's not hard. The Bible's not trying to trick you. It's not trying to confuse you. God, you have to have faith in. But guess what? When God speaks to you, you better take the time and make sure that you are obeying it. Because that's the manner in which you are saved. You are faithful in every way that you can be until the point of death. That's what God wants of you. Go out and do that. Thank you for being here. I hope you open your Bible and study all of the passages on faith and study all of the past passages of obedience. And guess what you'll find out? They go together because they do. That's the way that it works. It is the obedience of faith that you need in your life.